it means to dominate, to control, to have absolute sovereignty, to be the chief administrative manager of everything that God has created. Wow. What a highly esteemed responsibility is that. Can anyone tell me if you knew of any country's president or dictator or any head of state of any religious organization that has ever been endowed with such enormous power and responsibilities? I doubt it. Even King Solomon, with all his riches, wealth, and wisdom, was not given the dominion of the entire human race. How much more all creations that God has created? Can you for a second then imagine the responsibilities that Moses was carrying in the wilderness because we have we already been taught about Moses by the by, by, by our Bible study teacher? Moses was carrying the responsibilities of managing over two billion Jews in the wilderness. But he brought from Egypt and all the crises he had to settle from morning to night every day being brought to him for resolution with only his reign. How much more the administration of all that the Lord has created, it surely takes more than human effort to accomplish this task. Another met his wife and she conceived and gave back to their first child named Cain because I have gotten a man from the Lord. If conceived again, and gave back to another son called Abel, who was a keeper of the sheep. With the father of Cain and Abel, who were born in the image of Adam, we became the beneficiaries of these mental prodigies, which we inherited by virtue of the law of inheritance from the original parents. And what do I mean by that? Through Cain, through Abel, we also became the inheritor of this computer brain that we have today. But do you agree with me? Or can you name any other creation greater or more intelligent than man? No. We control all of them. We control the whales of the sea. We control the elephants. We control lions and even grizzly bears, as ferocious as they are. Now, let us examine ourselves. How far we have been able to meet up to the expectation in the manifestation of these gates. Do we still have these gates and dominion over all that the Lord has created? Or as our sin and faithless, loveless lives eroded these gifts from us? How many of us can give ourselves pass mark when asked, Are you a perfect father? Are you a perfect mother? Are you a perfect doctor? Are you a perfect nurse? Are you a perfect prophet? Are you a perfect youth? Are you a perfect daughter? Are you a perfect pastor? Are we a perfect reverend? Don't laugh. Because of our sins, we have over time lost control and dominion over all these attributes. Today we now possess only small percentages of these gifts. And they are even with grace from God. Apostle Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 10, that there are different gifts. But the same spirit, there are different kinds of work. But the same God works in all of them, in all men. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given wisdom. To one, knowledge. To one, faith. To one, healing power. To one, miraculous power. To one, prophecy. To one, distinguishing between spirits. To one, speaking in tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. And the word be, 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 which God used in every powerful 
statement that connotes a wide meaning. God did not just say, hey, man, go into the world and multiply. God said emphatically, go and be fruitful in the following different ways. Go and be fruitful in the following different ways. Not bearing children alone. No. What do you do with your brain? Be fruitful with your brain. How can I be fruitful with my brain? By thinking positively, constructively, beneficially, and then do what? Multiply. How do I multiply? By realizing the benefit of positive thinking. And that is by using my brain to help other people grow. Use your brain to help our church to grow. Use your brain to sow the seed of love and not confusion. Use your brain to sow the seed of love in your home, in your office, and in any position or situation you may find yourself. If we can do that, it shall be well with us. I am sure we are not contented seeing our membership not growing every Sunday. Just look around today. How many are sitting down? So many empty pews. Why can't we use our brain? Let us use our brain to work out how we can increase our membership. Come up with your ideas and just don't leave this task to the pastors alone. We are all God's fellows for Christ. And we can use our gifts to invite our friends, our families, and the church people to come and share the grace of Jesus Christ with us. Salvation is free. If only you accept it. We are all can endeavor to be evangelists. And this is the time. There's no time anymore. This is the time for us to go out and preach the gospel and bring your church people in. And how can we be fruitful? We can be fruitful also with our hands and our legs. Be fruitful with your hands. And Alex said, an idle hand is devil's workshop. Are we all not guilty of this offense at one time in our lifetime? When we are idle, with nothing significantly or important to us to think or worry about, we use our hands to commit different kinds of atrocities, like stealing, like depriving others of their possessions without their permission, because we feel like if we use our hand to do whatever our mind or brain displays to us negatively in moments of annoyance. There was an incident when a youth was going for a job interview. I want you to listen to me. There was an incident when a youth was going for a job interview and was riding in a train full of people where many elders were standing. And this youth beckoned on this elderly man to come and occupy her seat while her friends were mocking her and being naive since she paid for her seat just like anybody else. Few hours after she got to the job interview together with her friends, she was invited in before the interview panel and to her greatest shock on seat among the panel was the elderly man she gave her seat to while her friends were laughing at her as you can guess she was the only one that got tired how many times how many times have we seen our youth nowadays sitting on one seat in the bus in the train and placing their school bag on the next seat to them while elders are standing and they just get busy with their cell phone and ear is stuck in their ears. I thank God Jessica gave me a car. I don't have to go through all those stresses again in my life. Oh, it's not easy at all. I used to wonder who is 
to blame for this lack of moral training yes. and lack of respect and fear. The parents, the society, the church, or the youth themselves. So you will even show that part to you if you both of you meet at the entrance door as they will expect you to allow them to pass first and ask myself, we are having friends in our parenting. <laughs> if you talk to us, you are not now our one. And the police will not even listen to you. God help us. What are we doing with our eyes? In as long as the eyes are the windows to the human body, it is the eyes which first perceive or notice a situation, then pass the information to the brain, and both the brain and the heart then determine how to react, whether rationally or irrationally. The Lord in Mark 9 47 said, And if that eye shall cause thee to stumble, plug it out. It is better for thee to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. We have so many examples of this. King David was on top of his palace when he saw the beautiful Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, as we read in 2 Samuel 11, 2-5. And it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanliness. And she returned unto her house. If God had not loved David so much, and he would not go back on this covenant with David, what he did was enough for God to dethrone him as king of Israel. Because when God sent prophet Nathan to him to pass judgment on himself, he said in 2 Samuel 5.12, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the land for four because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. Thus, the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king over Israel. God told David, I anointed the king over Israel. And I delivered him out of the hand of Saul. Also, we read about the three magi that followed the star to Bethlehem in Judea. It was with their eyes that they were able to see and follow the star. It was with their eyes they also saw the newborn baby, Jesus Christ. But they never betrayed the trust. They went back on another way and not back to King Herod. How many of us have used our eyes to see other people's secret and trusted to us in confidence and because of one meaningless misunderstanding, we go about telling the whole world, do you know, that so and so have leprosy or blizzard also? Do you know? The Reverend Lambo's mother has horn in her head. <laughs> Do you know? So and so have once been suspended from college. As on the documents with my two eyes. Even though he has turned a new leaf. It is says there we allow our eyes to behold pure and holy things. So that our hearts and minds can also be occupied with pure thoughts. If you spend your precious time watching useless videos in your cell phone and refusing to sleep till midnight or funny pictures shared by your friends and you have classes next morning no matter how strong your willpower may be your brain will be constantly be tormenting your thoughts 
uh, mind with glimpses of images you have implanted in your subconscious brain. The Lord said in Luke 11, 34 to 36, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Take heed therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no pack dark, the whole shall be full of light. And when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Two. <coughs> what do we do? With our ears. Oh my God. Do you ask our ears? How many times do we lend our ears to gossip and then go about spreading rumors all over the entire planet? How many of us have done